Hello to then, folks. Hello then. Welcome back to some more MF Saga. It has been a couple of weeks since I have last recorded. It hasn't been that long since I had last played, because, you know, I'd actually recorded this about mm, nine hours ago-ish, but um, the audio for it had gone behind my virtual my virtual audio cables, which I used to, like, record Discord and stuff. Uh, so it had gone on the other side, and I was, re I was recording the wrong stream. So the game had no audio, and my dialogue had no audio, but like, I could hear it perfectly and all the video was working fine. It was kind of weird, but you know, so I have to redo this, but I'm still a little bit rusty. But I know in the last episode I said we were going to go do Fort Arid, but I thought about it beforehand and I we're not going to do it this time. We're actually going to do the easiest of all the dungeons. Um, You can do this dungeon without... Vargas, but I'm going to do it with Vargas so we can show you how to make it really easy. You really don't need it with this one. With the last one we're going to do, you definitely need it, but not really with this one. With this one, it's just kind of like, eh. It makes it easier, but they call out when they're about to do their attack pretty, pretty well. So you just block it. If you don't block it, it'll do like 1500. But, you know, if you do block it, it does like three. It's not that hard. So we're going to go zoom back to Maria's place. Or Marie's place. And then we're going to go head to that first dungeon that we went to. Uh, or the first fort. I want to say Berg, but it might not be Berg. I know that one down there is Fort Arid. And the one up north is Fall Dust. Or actually, that's a city. I don't know if... I have no idea what this one's called. It's been a while, and I don't think I knew it the first time either. So yeah, we're going to do this one. So this one's actually the easiest of all of them. We have to fight the greatest of enemies. Yeah, he, that black mobile suit. Not that Zaku who, killed, who tried to kill us in the very beginning. The better black mobile suit. You know it. We're fighting fucking Master Gundam. This fight I actually really enjoy. Because it's one of the first ones that's actually a real challenge to you. Because they can do some good uh, some good damage. It's not like Grand Gundam where it's a joke. Uh, the other Gundam, or the other two Gundams, you probably already know who they are. But I'm not going to spoil it because it's no fun. But the other two mobile suits aren't really a challenge. Or they are really a challenge, but they aren't really complex fights. They're The enemy's about to do a big attack. Either defend or block it. Okay, go back to doing what you're doing. The enemy's about to do a big attack. Vend block. It's like, oh, okay. This one actually has a little bit of a challenge. Sadly, we don't get Master Gundam data for this. Ironically, you don't get Master Gundam in the main game, which is really disappointing. I really wanted to Master Gundam my first time through. Then again, you know, getting the Burning Gundam is kind of ridiculous, and I don't think they expected you to get that in the main game, but you can. It's just really difficult, and we'll end up doing it near the end. I don't know if I said it in the last video or if it was in the one I, you guys will never see, but basically the shy, or the Burning Gundam slash God Gundam is the best melee suit in the game. So we're actually going to give that to Tristan, even though Li Fong really should get it, but we're just going to ignore that a little bit. Um, She'll probably end up getting like an Ultron or a Death Scythe or something. And it's not really spoilery since I already got Sandrock. But would you believe the boy who looks like an almost an exact clone of her has the same eye and vaguely the same hair color and the same clothes doesn't actually know who she is? Maybe they're of the same race. We'll talk in depth about Aeon's story later because there's still a couple of bigger things that are going to happen with her. I was thinking about spoiling it, but eh. This is one of those conversations, though, that makes, like, no sense later. Because, like, yeah, see, they're, like, bigging up Aeon, and... I don't remember her actually being all that important to the story, to be honest. Like, I know she's the main 
uh, ascending incident, but like she starts it all. But like we gotta rescue her, and that's about it. It's just like, oh, okay. I mean, since we're a shonen protagonist, we're gonna save the world anyway, so. Also, it kind of looks like he has head Vulcans pointing down. I guess there's supposed to be, like, some sort of pseudo-earring. Or, actually, I think that's supposed to be a 3.5mm jack. I guess that makes sense. Oh, and this guy also follows my idea that, uh, those kind of people don't have ears. Because they all wear headphones. And just so you know, that's the same sound effect as the G-System. But yeah, so this is why I was saying this was actually the easiest dungeon. Is because uh, he kind of fucks off and we fight some death army and that's about it. It's not actually that fun of a dungeon. But I think they expect this to be the first one you do because it's right next to Maria's place. But it's like, they give you the gow, so there's no fucking way I'm just gonna go run around places. No, I'm gonna go hit everyone randomly. Don't want them to know where I'm coming from. They might find Marie, and, you know, she'll have to pull out her freaking double Zeta. Because, by the way, she still has a goddamn double Zeta. And she gave us a GM in the beginning. Alright, everyone should be good. Um, so we may or may not use Li Fong. What I mean by that is we're probably not gonna use her unless the ending is very, very dicey. Entirely just because she's not very useful. She's still a glass cannon. So with these guys, I believe we fought them before, but basics. We charge the guy in the middle. We shoot all on everyone else. Seriously, even if you charge up and do a shoot all, these battles are like trivial. You just need to grind a shitload, and after you get the gal, grinding becomes super easy. If you're having problems with getting money also, uh, if you go to Arabia, you can uh, fight those golden GM, or the golden GM commands that give you 10,000 per battle. And then just have Trimi and Tristan in the main party and have them power charge in the very beginning, you'll kill them. Or, you know, it'll, you'll screw it up and they'll get away, but that happens about half the time anyway, so don't worry about it. All it takes is persistence and annoying. Yeah, recently I've been, uh, when I have to grind and stuff, I've been just plotting out my D&D &D while doing the same thing. It's not really D&D. &D. Which, I haven't really mentioned it, but I'm actually doing an MS Saga, uh, an MS Saga Gundam Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing. It's a campaign, basically, of what I've been calling it. But yeah, it's pseudo-based in MS Saga. I'm changing the story up a little bit as... So you guys don't, act well, not you guys, but my players don't actually know what happens. I do assume at least half of you watch me still. I know it's not true, but I'll assume it. I know one of you does at least. But yeah, it's, it's going to be really fun. Basically, I have the Death Army taking a more prominent role. And it's kind of a cross between MS Saga, uh, like Gurren Lagann's main setting, and then a little bit of Fallout. Like, Fallout's just kind of being sprinkled on, I've noticed. I'm hoping it'll work out. We're not starting till a little bit about the middle of next month, but I've gotten everyone's character sheets created, and I've mostly built the entire combat system from scratch. So it should be interesting. Um, there's a official Gundam PNP based off of Mechton, but I've always found that kind of, like, messed up. Or kind of bogged down because you usually get all of your players all trying to do the exact same thing because stat wise one stat is just superior to a bunch of others mm -hmm. these fights really aren't difficult but yeah you get all of your players trying to do the exact same thing so everyone is basically the same the entire time I just find that super boring 
So I've been homebrewing my own system. Which is ripping off a little bit of Mechton, a little bit of GURPS, um, some classic D&D. And by classic D&D, I literally mean D&D Advanced. Which is kind of surreal, because I haven't looked at that kind of stuff in months. And by months, I mean even years. Like, I used to play that when I was in junior high. And I've graduated college by now. Mm. It's a horrible thought to think about. I'm old. Yeah, I'm hoping it'll be pretty interesting. From the test game I played with it, at least... It looked like it was going to be fun. Um, instead of weapons actually uh, changing depending on how good your piloting is, uh, the weapons do static damage, but it's all about accuracy. And I'm building a couple of skills, or perks, or whatever you want to call them, that'll uh, kind of synergize with that. So it'll be more about constantly upgrading like this game is, rather than just you get one mobile suit and you customize it to be something awesome. Which is... I know for some people kind of disappointing, but I'm actually kind of holding the players back to what they can get early on. Because a lot of people want like Sinajus or the new, or one of my people even wants the Providence. And I haven't talked to the other two of what they want eventually, but um, yeah, so they want a bunch of like late tier stuff. So I'm actually kind of level gating progression behind that. Like it'll be a couple of dozen sessions before they even get the chance to getting like Zeta stuff, let alone getting CCA stuff. And then I know somebody who's actually thinking about getting a a Barbie or a Barbatos and then like using a bunch of captured equipment and customizing it from there. That's like super interesting for me for some reason. So yeah, I'm trying to have like salvage and whatnot actually play a direct role in the game. But it looks like Li Fong just got Enkoku Ken. Which, if you don't know, is called is Darkness Finger. It's one of the attacks that uh, Master Asia uses. Uh, in this one, though, it's basically Burning Finger, just darkness. It causes fear instead of overheat. Which is interesting, but... I find it funny that she unlocks that. I really wish there was a character who actually learned like all the Dark Punches. Like, back when Hal oh, and Hal joined you. Like, if they just slowly had him learning all the evil stuff. That would have been cool. Be a little bit too on the nose though for that twist. Yes, we get to fight the boss. One of the other four heavenly generals. You know who it is. Or you don't, which, if you haven't seen G Gundam, there's four of those guys. The Grand Gundam being the kind of most ridiculous one, but uh, they eventually combined into the Grand Ultimate Gundam, I believe it's called. But yes, we're fighting a master army. Basically, it's a ma it's a death army with master. I was about to say master Asia wings. It's a death army with uh, master Gundam wings. With master Asia wings. Yeah, I'm gonna have them charge up to do Gatling body. So if you have Vargas in this fight, you can basically make him. Uh, just counter every time he goes to attack. Because his attack is Hasho Ken. So, I don't... Does Aeon have counter snipe yet? I don't think he does, so we'll just have everyone defend. Uh, this attack will do about 1100 if you're unprepared. So, be careful, but it's not that bad. Oh, and Koku Ken. Yeah. Now he's Terror and Hurt, which is... Amazing. Um... General Purpose Med. Boost. You can... Gatling Fire, Gatling Fire, and you can Gatling Fire. The General Purpose Meds are just so good. It's like, yeah, any status effect you have, go ahead. Yeah, we'll just give everyone Riddlin. You'll feel better. It's fine. I wasn't expecting that. I love how he just like unloads on him and then all. I was about to call him Gavinger again. All Bazooie does is just go. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna stab you all. Don't worry, we have to 
very, very quickly after this one, we're going to another uh, base. So we don't really have to worry about TP. And you're going to charge, and you're just going... Yeah, I'll have you charge, or you use a med as well. If I had him charge, I could get him up to 9, but he would do less damage. I don't remember this death, uh, the master death having more than, like... Yeah. <laughs> 750. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. I don't remember him having more than about uh, 6,000 HP, so we should be good there. And... Um... Oh, he should have high repaired himself. Oh, well. Or I could have switched to Aeon or Trimi or Lifehong. We'll do that next round, if this doesn't kill him. Because this just might kill him. doesn't have very much HP. He's not actually that hard. I think even the first time I fought him, I was like, wow, he's dead already? Yeah, sadly no salvage, since I imagine he disappears in one of those darkness portals. We never actually find out how they do that, by the way. Like, I am very curious as to how they got teleportation to work. I guess maybe G-Systems allow you to teleport? Or, like, they can build a teleporter room from Star Trek? Which ironically works with my theory, but we'll get to that later. This is totally an open comm channel, you know. Everyone can hear you talking. Um, not exactly, but okay. I mean, you're not the one who told us to go assault these forts. That was the fact that Isengrad has this giant energy shield and we want to punch Hal in the face. Because he is a douchebag. Yeah, but what if she's actually a crazy maniacal bitch? I mean, like, what if you find out who she truly is, and then you hate her as a person? What you gonna do then? Like, what if she makes gear and look like a child? And then, you know, creates an intercellar empire where they use genocide as a means to an end. And it goes against everything you believe in. Will she really still be your friend? Or will you have to kill her and cut out her face? Cut off her face. Might have to kill her and cut off her face. That is entirely a possibility. I was actually going to run around the bottom side to go back to Fort Arid, but I guess we'll go back to Eldar Samnia. That's kind of dumb. I had honestly forgot that was a thing, but... I guess that is. So yeah, we're totally about to go do that next fort. That's going to happen. You actually just have to run into the next fort for the next part of the event to trigger. I guess there's an event trigger on entering the forts, depending on how many you've closed down. But yeah. So, I just want to point something out here, which, you know, I find interesting. So, vaguely from this map, we can see the Gulf of Sinai to maybe Kaiseris in Tripoli. Those two places are about 230 miles away from each other. Thus, Vargas didn't actually overshoot us. He just flat out passed our asses, because he definitely had enough time to turn around. You can only go, I think it was 180 miles in one of those things, and that's per hour. Remember, that was fast back in the day. Plus, they're basically sky barges. So, he just didn't turn around. He was like, nah, fuck you guys, I'm going home. Maybe he wanted to hit on Marie while we weren't there. And, was it last video that I figured it out? But, um... That roll in Li Feng's hair isn't actually part of her hair. It's like a bow or some shit. I always thought there was like the half Amidala roll. 
Mm -hmm. But we magically teleport back to Marie's cabin. Just as Gavinger would have wanted. Remember that Gavinger actually had no idea this wasn't going to be the end of the Death Army. He legitimately believed, just as we do, that we would have defeated the last one and we'd been fine. There's just no way Gavinger would have wanted us to have the Zeta Gundam. He's planning for it, but what did we need it for after the war was over? Unless, you know, he wanted us to go murder Isengrad or something. Which is entirely possible. Maybe Gavinger is the real enemy to this game. In the very end of the game, he's gonna pop out when we're in the enemy's final base like, Bitch, I didn't die, what's wrong with you? Now I have this awesome trick to have Gelgoog who's gonna rip your face off. Sadly, he's not that cool and it's not actually a Gelgoog. It's even better than that. But you guys have probably already seen it, because for some reason there is a article on on the Gundam Wiki about the last boss. Nothing else in the game, just the last boss. And when you Google MS Saga, it's the first thing that comes up. But yes, yeah, so we got the Zeta Gundam, which I forget the designation to right now. But this was developed in collaboration between a a man named Camille Bidon, who has a girl's name. Don't let that deny you. He is in fact a man, or at least we're told so. Using designs from his dad's uh, Gundam Mark II, the uh, Neo Zeon technically developed Rick Diaz, which we had before, but I've gone over that one before. And a couple of other things that I forget, but basically he combines the movable frame idea with the Rick Diaz's Gundarium armor to create the Zeta, which, oh, unlike how Zeta portrayed it, how it, how canon is now, uh, the Zeta wasn't actually the first transformable Gundam. That would be the Delta Gundam. However, the Delta Gundam had this massive issue where it would bend the frame every time it would transform, so it would only be able to transform about three times before the frame would crack in half. However, with that frame removed and a couple of wing binders added, you get the Hyako Shiki. They were able to perfect it in the uh, Zeta Gundam, and eventually they would apply that to the Delta Kai Plus, I believe it was called, from Unicorn. Or the Delta Kai Natro, which was a pseudo-new type exam system kind of thing, also from around the time of Unicorn. I actually like that Delta Kai, it's really cool. I just find the bits kind of dumb. But to me it more looks like a bow than the Delta Gundam, so not the worst. Oh, and I also want to point out that this is the first time Vargas and Trini have talked to each other since Tohai. Yeah, uh, he doesn't hate her, <laughs> hate him. She totally is cool with him basically stalking and harassing her. That's totally the truth. Then again, she probably would have just killed him if that was really the issue because you know for some reason she doesn't just kill him even though th she threatens to many many times i really wanted her character to just be like nah i'm killing him and then to kill him and then have him replaced with his twin brother Vargas, who's actually secretly gavinger so similar to a lot of uh like RPGs like this game from the early uh, the early 2000s, we now get the choice. We are only allowed six party members because that's how many can fit inside the bite. So we have to switch between Vargas and Li Fang, but we can do it at will at almost every saving point. The system board is really dumb though, but there's a couple of changes we need to make before we do that. But so we'll tackle that a little bit later. But we are going to grab Vargas instead of Leifang. Just because Vargas ends up being more useful in the end. I don't want to go into Marie's room, thank you very much. Uh huh, you say that now, but I'm pretty sure once you get your memories you're going to betray us. I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm, sure you will. Well, you see, she's actually the person who created the Unicorn 150 years ago, or 100 years ago, or whatever it was. She has a bunch of data from stuff she shouldn't have access to, and she doesn't age. And she's probably made out of plastic. 
you figure it out. I mean, they keep hinting to it, and then the game never really tells you who exactly she is. You remember that time she admitted to it earlier? I'm pretty sure that's the only time we'll ever hear about it. Mm -hmm. So we find out that Fritz had been hiding here the entire time. You know, the like six or so times I came back here immediately after he ran away. Yeah, that was the reason. Well, he was here and he was hiding from us the whole time. And then she gave him a full armor Gundam because, you know, remember all that work we had to go through to get the Gundam? She was like, oh yeah, I had it in this desk drawer. Here, have it. I really wish they would have done something else with that G-System and right below this place that we started out in. Like, it's still damaged, and if you walk up to it, all it says is, it's damaged beyond repair. I really wish there would have been, like, a dungeon created in there or something. Or, like, we'd open up the back and find this giant facility underneath. Maria's like, oh yeah, it's been there the whole time. That's why I told you guys not to go there. But then again, she told us to go there, so... Sadly, that'll never come to be, so we have to do something else. She really wants to help us for some reason. But yeah, she is where we go to to change uh, party members. Also, I want to point out, she modified the G-System network to do this. In the time it took from Trimi to walk from us up the stairs to tell her, and then us to walk in, she modified the G-System. And yet she can't just turn it off. And stop the enemies from producing shitloads of Death Army. But yeah, so basically every save system now allows us to switch party members if we want. Which, um, we might use Lifang a couple of times, but we're probably not going to use her all that much. And then we get one more party member at the very, very end of the game. Oh, yeah, I should probably show you guys before I do any of this. And yeah, we get one more party member before the very end of the game, but you never use him, so... Or at least you can use him, and he comes in a nice shiny new Gundam. Which is always fun, but I'll probably end up not using him. So we got the Zeta Saber 3, or the Zeta Saber, I should say. The Zeta Beam Rifle, and the Zeta Shield. We'll only ever get three of these, or each of these. But if you go into the final dungeon, I believe you can get a chest that has another set of them. But by then, you don't need it. Look how good the stats on this thing are. And by good, I mean, well, the HP is a little low compared to the uh, Sandrock. But look at everything else. It's pretty good. So, first things first, we're actually going to go strip some people of some parts. Because we're going to move Tremie over into the Sandrock and then Vargas into the Gundam Mark II. But starting off, we have the Zeta booster, which is the back booster for the Zeta. I really like how this looks, and I think it looks really good in this game, but we're not going to use it, so we're just going to take it off, because remember we have the double Zeta one. There's also the biosensor, which the biosensor, well, it doesn't tell us here. Where are you? It increases uh, mind and reflex by 10%, so basically it makes funnels do 10% more damage. So we're giving that to Aeon. Remember I mentioned that a little while ago, that we'd be giving her something like that later in the game? Yeah. Because, wouldn't you know, Tristan doesn't have any funnels. So, him having funnels would be kind of useless. So yeah, she does have a large pun and enhanced wing. For some reason, I had thought that she had a dual booster, but she doesn't. So, we're just going to pop these off. Give these to the Zeta. Double booster. And the perfect guard. Because I love this thing, it's amazing. But we're actually going to make one more other change. So, he also has the grenade arms, which are built in. Um, usually I actually pop these off and give that, um, replace these with the Shining Gundam's arms and give these to either, uh, Fritz or Bezuli so they can have more built-in weapons and do even more damage. But first, we gotta cycle through all those other mobile suits. Um, I think one day I'll sell these, but I think it's gonna be at the end of the game. So I just like having, like, the idea of us carrying around, like, 30 mobile suits with us. We're actually gonna go, you know rip off the arms and the legs off of the training Gundam, because we're not actually going to use Lifang, to be honest. Like, I really feel bad about it, but she's not very good. So, what we're going to do is we are going to equip the Shining Gundam shoulders on here, because while they lower our armor and our speed by quite a bit, 20 melee. 
can't beat 20 melee. And then the Shining Gundam arms have the same amount of damage, just less range, which is fine. We're not going to use them for range. And then, yeah, I think the Shining Gundam legs are all around just terrible. Stand corrected. That's not bad. That's like way better than he had, but remember his legs are like super old right now. So if you'll remember, uh, Gavin, or not Gavinger, uh, Bezui was actually doing the least range damage, so we'll give him the grenade arms. When I was doing, uh, not full boost, uh, Gatling body. That's it. So yeah, um, if, is there anything that's better? Hmm. I don't think I did this last time, but fuck it. Let's give him some Rick Diaz arms. He'll be a little bit slower, but who cares? Oh, that's legs. I was like, wait, where are they? I'm not blind, am I? Oh, no, he'll have a little bit less armor, but that's not that bad either. He's not really the armor kind of person. He should be, but he isn't. So, yes, this is the new Zeta Gundam. It is the Shining Zeta, as I like to call it. Also, notice that the stats, it's completely unupgraded. Like, it has zero upgrades right now. Stat-wise, compared to unupgraded Zeta is the same as the full armor with the double booster fully upgraded. Uh, by the end, its melee damage will be about what Gavinger's is range damage is. So it's super useful. Also, this video has gone on way long. Um, so we're actually going to go swap out Lifang real quick. So this game does it in a really stupid way. We have to remove her from the party, which we can't remove Trimi, Aeon, or Fritz, like, throughout the game. So we just kind of have to accept that they're there. You can get rid of Bazooly if you want, because he's basically a, a discount Fritz, but we're not going to. We're, in fact, going to move in Vargas. And then we're going to go back here, and we're going to switch. We're going to switch Vargas into the Mark II. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. My bad. And a uh, not a on Trimi into the Sandrock. So we're gonna go Trimi, Sandrock, Vargas, Mark II. And parts wise, they'll be basically the same, except for we gotta strip off everything off of here. And we're not gonna be changing the Sandrock too much. We're just going to be giving it these. Um, large type wing. Yeah, you can use the extra armor. Yeah, so that's all we're doing. Like, literally all of the parts aren't very good for him. So we'll just be, or for her, I should say. And then she's, everything here is good. Though we can get rid of this and go for a more ranged focused build. Okay. Yeah, that should be enough for now. Um, but yeah, folks, that'll be that. Like the episode if you like it, dislike it if you didn't. We'll be back a little bit later to go hit Fort Arid, finish that up, and then we'll have the final dungeon after that. Or the final fort, anyway. Then the final dungeon. Which should be a ton of fun. But anyway, folks, good night.